Good morning, everyone. Okay, if you're listening to part two, if you're listening to part two and you didn't watch part one, pause this video and go back and listen to part one so that it can make better sense to you. Because if not, you're just going to be listening to scriptures and they may encourage you, but you won't really know where the scriptures are coming from. So I would advise you if you're listening to part two and you didn't listen to part one, listen to part one and then come back and listen to part two but for you that were listening to part one um we're continuing on from in part two so going back to ecclesiastes 3 verse 4 there's a time to weep and a time to laugh and like i said you can't despise the times and the seasons that you're dealing with because the bible's letting us know that there is a time and a season for everything there is a time to mourn and a time to dance Right, I'm just going to read it. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. It's a time for everything. And just personally look at what times and seasons you're going through. It's a time to embrace it, a time to refrain. It's going to be a time where you embrace it and you're close, but then it's going to be a time where you have to refrain. Or maybe the season change. Or maybe you have to be secluded for a season. Because God is trying to get you deeper into Him and bring some people in your life and remove some or work on you and other people in different seasons and then he will bring it back look at paul and barnabas so a time to search six and a time to give up a time to keep and a time to throw away there's a time and season for everything seven a time to tear and a time to mend a time to be silent and a time to speak now is not always the time to be talking and then now it's not always the time to be silent. There's a time to be silent and a time to speak. Verse 8, there's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time for war and a time for peace. So that scripture ties into um, what we were talking about. The next thing that I wrote is, um, bear with me guys. So that ties into point two. Also, um, these scriptures tie into point two as well. First Corinthians chapter twelve, and I'm gonna do my best to read all of this in this video. Whatever I don't get to, I'm just gonna have to leave it below in the description box. But I wanted to read this into you guys there because you can see how they tie in. But I'm hoping that I'm able to read all of them. You guys know the phone only gives me such amount of time with um, recording one video. So, 1 Corinthians 12. Like I said, we've read some of these before and done studies on them, but this is tied into the spiritual laundry video. So, what we're going to be talking about in 1 Corinthians 12, and you guys can feel free to go there with me if you want to, or you can just listen. Spiritual gifts in one body, many parts. This ties into point, point two. So, now about spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you are pagan, somehow or other, you are influenced and led astray to new idols. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is good, is given, I'm sorry, for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another the interpretation of tongues on well, verse 11 for you continuing on all these are the verse 11 reading on all these are the work of one in the same spirit and he gives them to each one just as he determines so verse 1 through um, 11 is talking about spiritual gifts verse 12 excuse me through 31 is talking about one body many parts so the body is a unit Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks. Slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. 
if the foot should say, because I am not a hand. Remember, all this is going back to point two. I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, verse 17, continuing on, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts? And then he said, and now I will show you the most excellent way. And he's talking about in chapter 13, talking about the love chapter. But that concludes um, 1 Corinthians 12 is 1 through 31. So let's go to the next one, guys, which is 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 7. I wanted to read this whole chapter, but the Lord told me not to last night. Because what it's talking about is gifts of prophecy and tongue. In orderly worship, he told me to just read verses 1 through 7, so that's what I wrote. I originally wanted to read 1 through 25, but I need to just read what he said, so I just put 1 through 7 because that's what he told me. If you want to read it in its full context, you can, but I'm just going to focus on verse 1 through 7 because it's talking about gifts of prophecy and tongues. So follow the way of love because it's not good to add or take away. It's not good to add or take away, so I try not to do that, and I don't do that. So, I'm like, let me just do verse 1 through 7 like he told me. So, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. And by the spirit, because when you speak it in tongues, you are speaking unto mysteries unto God, right? So, um, that's two, three through seven. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. He who speaks in the tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I would like, this is Paul speaking, I believe, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I would rather have you prophesy. He who prophesies is greater than one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may be edified. Now, brothers, if I come to you and speak in tongues, what good will I be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? Even in the case of lifeless things that make sounds, such as the food or heart, how will anyone know what tune is being played unless there is a distinction in the notes? So that's 1 Corinthians 1-7. through 7. And I believe that this is the Apostle Paul because we did read Corinthians before some of it. That Apostle Paul had wrote this to the church in Corinth in about um, winter eighty fifty five. Okay, so guys, going back to point three, now we're moving on to point three scriptures. Revelation 16 is the next one. It looks like we're going to be able to read everything in this video. Thank God. So, um, Revelation 16, verse 7 through 15. No, I'm sorry. Verse 7 says, and I heard the altar respond because it's, but we did read this fully in Revelation series. I always tell you guys, feel free to read things in their full context. 
these are just the verses that for this video so um revelation 16 7 and i heard the altar respond yes lord god almighty true and just are your judgments this is going back to point three right and then we're going to jump down to verse 15 that says behold i come like a thief blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed right it's time back to our points in um, part one of today's video next i want to read revelation chapter 21 all this is tying back to point three which um 21 is talking about the new jerusalem so then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with man, this is verse 3 reading one, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vow, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magical arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia, or about 1,400 miles or 2,200 kilometers in length and as wide and high as it is long. He measured its walls and it was 144 cubits thick by man's measurement with the, which the angel was using. The wall was made of jasper, and the city appeared gold as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third um, chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysoprase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The, street, the great street of the city was of pure gold, like transparent glass. Twenty-two through um, twenty-seven. Excuse me, guys. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are His temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will this gate ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does with a shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then Revelation 22 is talking about the river of life, if you wanted to continue on. But we just were going to read Revelation 21 only for um that point and next we're going to jump into second peter 3 then after second peter 3 the other scriptures that i have is on um, 
is um, Psalms 119, 65, and then the ones that I told you about is John, and then that'll be it. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3. Let me go there in a second, guys. Excuse me, guys. Don't mind my yawn. And I told you guys I still was a little sleepy, but I was going to be obedient and get up early and do this video. And plus, this is like the only time I have to do it. But instead of rolling over to go back to sleep, I know I needed to get up. So, so 2 Peter 3 is talking about the day of the Lord. So, dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders. Hold on, guys. Let me see something. Yeah. Okay, I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. First of all, you must understand, well, verse 3 continuing on, first of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. Right? Remember Noah? Remember Noah's days? They laughed at him. They mocked him. It was only eight people saved. Noah and his family. Pretty much his family. Everyone else, they missed it. So um, by the same word, getting back into verse 7, by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly man. That's why we have the rainbow. The covenant, that's God's covenant, that he will not destroy this earth again with water. But see, this time it's going to be by fire, right? So, but um, being kept for the depth, judgment, and discretion of ungodly men. Verse 8, let's go to verse 8 through 18. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. But the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God, and speed is coming. That they will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him, but this is Peter writing this book, right? He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be in your God so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. And then, um, hold on guys, the next scripture that we're going to go to, let me see and we'll make sure I read everything before I go into the next one. The next one, guys, is on Psalms 119.65. This doesn't go to no point. This is just after all the points and stuff. These are the other um, asterisks that he gave me. So I want to, I wrote these so I can read them. Psalms 1965. Because he gave these to me afterwards. So they don't really tie into any points. They just kind of go with um, the message. Psalms 
Psalms 119. Hold on, I'm going there, guys. Verse 65 says, do good to your servant according to your word, O Lord. All right, spiritual laundry. So now we're going to jump into John 14. And we're just going to be in John 14 until it's time to close. Um, John 14. John 14, verse, let's do verse 1 through 7. Then we'll do verse 15 through 20. Then we'll do verse 23 through 29. Wait, wait a second, guys. So, so John 1 through 7 is talking about Jesus comforts his disciples and Jesus the way to the Father. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God or you believe in God, right? Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms, some translations say many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So we're going to jump to verse 15 through 20, which is talking about Jesus' promises, the Holy Spirit. So if you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. And for you that want to read these in their full context, I encourage you to do so, so you can know what it's fully talking about. The reason why I'm not doing that is because we already did a full John series, and we've read John 14 multiple times, aside from the actual John series. So these are just the scriptures that I'm hearing to read for the video. So that's what we're doing. But I always tell you guys, be like the Bereans in the book of Acts. And make sure you know what the Bible says. Go back and read things in their full context. I always encourage you guys to read the chapter before and after to get a deeper understanding. So you know why that chapter is saying what it is. So let's go back to 15. John 14, 15, reading on. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever the spirit of truth which we know him also as the holy spirit the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you i will not leave you that even is in you some early manuscripts say right i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you before long the world will not see me anymore but you will see me because i live you also will live on that day you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. And we're going to close with 23 through 29. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Verse 28 and 29, you heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. God bless.